All right, it's Jeff Challen again, and we're continuing with the set of screencasts that are getting you up and running with Subversion integrated into Eclipse. So the next thing we're going to do is, is pretty common. So I have a project that I'm starting locally, and I want to save that project to my Subversion repository to make sure that any changes that I make to it are stored on the remote server. Uh, that will allow me to get access to it in other places, and will also allow me to keep track of the contents in case I lose my local copy. Um, so let's walk through that process. So I'm in the um, Java perspective here. If you go down here up in perspective, uh, let's see, I think this is the, just the Java default one. I'm in that one already. And you'll see that I don't have any projects open here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to have something to, um, to commit to some versions. So I'm going to create a new project. Um, oops, I don't want to open project. I've got a project. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Here we go. File, new. Java project. It's going to ask me for something. I'm going to call this new. Um, it's a pretty terrible name, but I'm only going to use this one for a minute as an example. Um, all right, hit this. That's fine. Um, and hit finish. Okay, so now I have a new Java project, and you'll see that it's uh, created the default source directory here. And now let's create a new um, class in this project. And this is stuff that we will definitely go over in more detail in the future. I'm just walking through this right now uh, to give you a sense of how to actually add the project to Subversion. Uh, so don't worry if any, none of this makes sense yet in terms of this part of the workflow. I really want to focus on the Subversion part, but this is necessary. So I'm going to create a new test class called new. Um, I'm surprised Java even lets me do that because I just called new. And then all that this does is print welcome to CS125. Um, all right, and so I can run this, and I see down here at the bottom, welcome to CS125. Okay, that's great. So I'm pretty proud of myself now. I've created this new project, and I want to add it to Subversion so that I can uh, save the contents or share it with other people. So here's what I do. I go over here to the left, and I right-click on the project, and down in the Team section, I'm going to hit Share Project. Now this opens up an, a dialogue here and, and asks you how you want to share this project. So Eclipse now comes with built-in integration with Git, which is a version management system that you will probably use in the future. Uh, but we're using Subversion this semester, so instead of Git, I want to make sure that I select Subversion as the repository type. Then it asks me, uh, do I want to use an existing repository location? And this is the one that I had configured previously. This is the one I'm using for CS125 this semester. So I hit Finish. And now what's going to happen is it's going to generate the first commit. So when I add a project to a repository, um, I essentially have to generate a commit for that project. Remember, a commit is like a save that saves the contents, a snapshot of all of the contents of the project at this point in time. So you'll see down here, it's actually telling me which files are going to be included in the commit. These are all the files that are in my project so far. Not a lot. Uh, here's my new.java that, that contains that uh, beautiful print statement. Uh, I'm going to add for my new project capitalized. Um, OK, hit OK. And then you'll see here that now when that commit finishes, what you're seeing here is that Subversion has assigned a commit ID. Uh, the commit ID is uh, 1,365. These commit IDs, I think, are actually shared across the entire remote repository. So it's kind of weird. I just added my first thing to my repository, and it already has a commit ID of, of 1,300. Um, but that reflects the fact that there are 800 other students in the class. OK, so now I'm done. Now if I go over to my window and go to perspective, open perspective, I want to get into my Subversion repository browser because I want to show you that the project is there. OK, awesome. So I go over here, and, and here's the view of my uh, repository. And you'll see there's no new project here. Uh-oh, uh, did something go wrong? No. Instead, what I need to do is make sure that I refresh my view. So I refresh my view, and now I see that on the server is a directory called new, and that directory contains the contents of the project that I just created. So I have a local copy of that project that's stored on my own computer, but that's now linked to a copy on the remote repository, which is exactly what I want, because um, let me show you uh, how, what, what can happen here. So. Let's say I go back to my window perspective Java. So I'm going to go back to my project. And let's say that I accidentally, uh, in this case on purpose, but delete this entire project. 
Okay, so it says you want to remove project new from the workspace, uh, and I it says delete project contents on disk cannot be undone. This is this really scary message. Uh oh, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm losing all my hard work here. Um, will I ever be welcome to CS125 again? Well, this is interesting. Let's go over uh, to the SVN repository viewer and see. Uh, see what happened. This is one of the reasons to uh, use Subversion in the first place. Okay, so I'm going to open up. Again, I'm going to go to the perspective Subversion, and I'm going to refresh my view, and I'll see, oh good, I still have a copy of that on the remote server. So even though my own local files that are part of this project have been destroyed, I still have a copy on the remote server that I can open. So here's what I do to open that project. I'm going to click check out. This is the operation in Subversion that means I want a local copy of this project on my machine that I can modify. Okay, so I hit check out. And let's see here. I think it, let's see if it just did the right thing. I don't know if there's anything else I need to do. Um, I go over to perspective, go to the Java perspective, and here it is. So here is my recovered copy of my my wonderful, my wonderful welcome message. So I can run that again, and there I'm welcome to CS125 again. Let me show you the dialog for adding a new project. Um, so you've noticed um, on the repository explorer that there were, let's see, go back to perspective. If I go back to my SVM repository exploring, you'll notice that there's also a test project. So let me show you how to add that to your workspace. So again, hit checkout. Um, and this time it asks me, um, oh, okay, it says already in the, uh, I think I forgot to delete this one before. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now if I go back to window perspective Java, I can see that I now have a test project in here too. And this is one that I created earlier. Um, so here you can see that my source consists of, uh, I don't, did I not open this? Oh, new.java, look, uh, no. Oh, the test project was empty, that was my issue. So there were, there were no, con that didn't have any contents. Okay, um, all right, so that is, um, that's how to get started adding a repository to the remote server. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, now if, if you want, you can use the Subversion repository view to, you know, uh, muck with the contents of the remote server as well. So if I go over to remote perspective, go back to subversion repository exploring, I have options over here to delete things. So for example, I can delete this entire directory. Um, now, when I do this, this is what's interesting about version control. If I try to delete this directory, what subversion is going to do is it will delete the directory, but the contents will never be forgotten. So Deleting in Subversion is essentially committing a new change to the, to the repository that says, I don't want to see this folder anymore. But it doesn't mean that the contents are gone. Anytime you add contents to a Subversion repository, and this is also true for Git and other uh, repository uh, systems, other version control systems, the version control system will remember that information forever. Um, there are things you can do to get it to forget, but in general, the normal workflow is that even when files are removed from your project, the repository, the version control system, remembers the fact that they existed, and it remembers all their contents at every commit. So again, you can imagine how useful this is. Some you know, person on your team accidentally deletes some files, um, and you can recover those files by backing up to a previous version and finding them. Um, okay, so I'm going to say time to delete my test directories um, and hit OK. And now you'll see that that's gone. And I can do the same thing uh, here. Delete, delete my other test directory. And I'm good. OK, so now my subversion repository is clean. Uh, but you'll, again, you'll see that the repository number here is bumped up a couple of times. And that's because I've created new two new commits to remove um, those folders that I created previously.